Welcome. In front of me is a Microsoft Surface Duo and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So we're gonna start off with probably the most simpler one which is just a dark mode. Now there is a toggle for it which you can add to your notification panels. You can quickly toggle it on and off whenever you want it. And to do so you could just tap on this pencil right here. You can actually hit it unlike me. There we go. And at the bottom you'll have toggles that are disabled. Now obviously there's more toggles than just dark mode in here. So we have the nightlight as well, dark theme, invert colors, data saver, screencast, airplane mode, and so on. So if you want some of those as well, again, uh, same thing you can do with this one. Hold it, drag it over, drop it, and you're done. And now you go back, you'll have your, whoops, let me just fix that up. There we go. You will have your dark theme toggle right over here and you can toggle it on at will. Now, moving on to the next option, it's going to be the gesture navigation. So, there is some kind of setting for it throughout the setup. I don't remember if you can turn it on or off from there or if it just notifies you how to use it. But if you want to fiddle with it and, for instance, get back the typical uh, three button navigation, then you can go into the settings from here scroll all the way down to system and in system we're gonna now go to gestures and system navigation where you'll find the gesture and three button navigation so you can pick whichever one you prefer more now personally i do prefer the gesture navigation instead of this one so i'm just gonna go back to it but obviously if you want to keep the other one you are free to do so it is completely up to preference Now, for some reason, this is a little bit bugged. Let me just quickly see if I can get it back to working normally. There we go. As you can see, the phone does have still some kinks even after a year of being released. But anyway, so another thing that I wanted to show you, and the reason why I wanted to fix it is as this option right here. So there is a semi one-handed mode, uh, what you can call. Uh, so if you want to access, for instance, some of the apps right here, but you're holding the device in your right hand, what you can do is swipe on this normally you should be able to there we go um, but again like i said the phone is a little bit wonky and it will move all the applications to this side so you can access it and this goes basically both ways so you can do it the other way as, as well now moving on with the uh, basically microsoft only kind of exclusive uh, options another one would be uh, the different kind of screen modes so obviously uh, when you open some kind of app, uh, there's a couple things that you can keep in mind. So let me just open one here and let's say one here. There we go. Good enough. So as an example, if I want to use this screen and I fold this one back, uh, the other one will still be open in the background, or at least it should be in theory. And there we go. So you can flip back to it. There we go, it keeps going back. Now this screen is turned off, so only appears when you double tap it to turn it on and it will reopen the application that should be on this screen. Now, unfortunately, when you open it up, as you can see, it closes the other application for some reason, but oh well. Uh, hopefully uh, the update for Android 11 will solve some of those problems. Now, additionally, uh, you can create shortcuts like this one for different applications. As you can see, this will allow you to launch two different applications simultaneously. Uh, so as an example, if uh, we have some, those are the pre-made ones. So we have things like Discover. And this will launch YouTube and the News. So obviously you can use two different things at once right here. And it automatically launches both of them. I have paint on my finger, so I think that's the reason why the screen isn't reacting too well. But yeah. So anyway, you can create your own as well, if you want to. And let's see if I can remember how to actually do it. So let's see, I want to use something like Chrome. Okay, so you hold one and it gives you this option right here, group. So you can hold any kind of icon. As you can see, it always has this group option. So in an example, I want to make something like Chrome and, uh, and YouTube. So I'm gonna select group. And this will automatically include Chrome, Chrome as an option. And now it asks, asks me to use the, uh, or select the second application that I want to have. So I'm gonna go with the YouTube right here, select done. 
and here we have the option where the application will be located so but right now we have chrome on our left side and youtube on our right side if you want it the other way around just simply swap it and there we go that's it click on ok and this will create a shortcut on your home screen as you can see and when you tap on it it automa automatically launches those two applications for you to basically have quick access to and there we go And moving on to the last thing that I wanted to show you, uh, which is kind of a hidden one. It took me uh, some time to actually figure it out, more than I would have expected it. So you have two screens, and as you've probably already seen, you always open up your content on one of the screens. You can also swap it to the other one, whoop de doo uh, Probably everybody figured this out, right? But there is also an option for you to basically have the same uh, application open on both screens to basically spam it. So what you would do is grab it like you do normally to close it or basically go to uh, applications like the recent applications or just to swipe it across. But as you can see, when you swipe it from one side to the other, it has this kind of like outline right here, the white one. But if you put it just in between, it will have this option where it's basically whiting out the both pages at once or both screens and when you let go it then starts spawning the screen and additionally in this mode when you flip it over there we go so if you flip it over obviously it works normally like this so there we go we have the normal view of our tabs uh, but as an example if you try to type something it will take the keyboard right at the bottom and cover the entire screen right here and give you the second top right here to use. So just a nice way to use it. Now, obviously this has also additional benefits. So if you're using this device for, as an example, emulation to emulate uh, things like DS games and stuff like that, you can do the same thing where you will have the controllers at the bottom and then the screen at the top. Obviously DS has both screens, but uh, you get the point of it. It will basically divide the screen into two where you get to use both of the screens at the same time. Let me flip this over. And obviously in different modes, uh, there's another thing. Your keyboard will always split into whatever mode you're in. So right now, if we're in spanning mode, you can see it divides the keyboard and it's only at the edges so you can easily type with both of your thumbs. But as an example, if I flip the screen to only be on my right screen, it will move the uh, entire keyboard to the right right here or normally it should but I think it's not this is I think not uh, Microsoft keyboard Let me just make sure yeah I don't think this is the Microsoft keyboard that's why it's not working <laughs> but by default you when you're using the default keyboard it does differ which side you're typing on which will then shift the keyboard to the correct side now this one uh, this is a is Microsoft Swift key, uh, so I don't know which one it is using by default, but it's not this one, obviously, because it would have been shifting it to the side. So anyway, uh, that's basically all I got for you, and if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.